Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode, powered by Hayabusa, is about the differences between Muay Thai and kickboxing. If you're a Muay Thai fighter looking to transition to kickboxing, make sure you pay close attention to this video. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about the differences between Muay Thai and kickboxing. And it's gonna be in a little bit more detail. There's the big obvious differences between the rule sets, the elbows, the clinching. But let's get into a little bit more of the detail, the specifics of things, okay? So the first thing we need to talk about is this head-to-head -head range. What is head-to-head -head range? The range is where we're nice and close. Now, in traditional Muay Thai, usually when you get to this head-to-head -head range, what happens is the clinch happens. With kickboxing, we don't have that clinch range, so that's where things change a little bit. So as a Muay Thai fighter, you have to have an answer other than the clinch for that range. So ideally, what you wanna do is use those teeps, use the long kicks to keep the kickboxer away from you. The idea is the kickboxer wants to use the hands, and that's where head-to-head -head range plays a big difference. So, have an answer for that. The two answers for me would be, like I just mentioned, keeping those Teeps away, staying long, or move your feet, keep your distance. You do not want the kickboxer to get in close and stay in that range. That's the range where they prefer. So the second point, since we're here talking about this head-to-head -head range, is going to be boxing, okay? There's a big difference. Yes, there is boxing in Muay Thai, but there is a little bit more of a difference. You're gonna find more traditional boxing in kickboxing than in Muay Thai. So what does that mean? Usually the kickboxer is gonna come inside, use a lot of body-head combinations, and mix things up. So the Muay Thai fighter has to have an answer for that range. You can't clinch, because usually, if they're fighting in Muay Thai rules, the Muay Thai fighter's gonna let the boxer come, tie their hands up, knees and elbows, and it slows the fight down. But we don't have that option when it comes to kickboxing. So this is usually where the biggest differences happen. So just getting comfortable improving the boxing helps. A good example is, look at Glory Kickboxing. One of our champions, Sita Chai, we had Pech Pan and Maroon, some of the most dominant Muay Thai fighters in the world, all have to practice their boxing on a regular basis. Once they get their hands involved, you see how dominant they become. Do they get a lot of warnings when they first start for excessive clinching? Yes, but once they understand the rules, that's where things start to play really well for them. So being able to block and counter in that head-to-head -head mid range is very important, right? We don't have that long guard. Yes, you can clinch very quickly, but at that point, we need to follow the rule set and to be an exciting kickboxer, you gotta have an answer for that range. So boxing, being able to punch, use the jab, block, and then counter off is something more Muay Thai fighters need to practice. Now, the other thing you're gonna notice is the differences, and this was one of the big problems with me, is when I fought Muay Thai, the pace slowed down, right? In kickboxing, it's all about more speed and pace. Traditionally, Muay Thai fights are five rounds where kickboxing are three outside of world championship fights. So with three rounds, you find the pace a little higher. And then again, in that traditional Muay Thai, the pace, the slower, the hit, the tie, you'll notice pace is a lot different. So if you're transitioning, get your work rate up. It's important that you practice your combinations, punch to kick, kick to punch, move, and repeat, 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 okay? So main difference, get the hands going, get that volume, get that pace really going well. Now, again, we're talking about details and specifics. Defense changes a lot. Now, when you talk about Muay Thai, some of the best things they have for defense is the clinch. So when big boxers come forward, to be able to use long guard, tie up the hands, use the knees, it becomes very effective. Even though we're not using the elbows, the clinch still can't be used enough. So one thing that you're gonna have to use is, you can't just be very stable high guard either, which can be bad, right? And you can't use that long guard too much. Some of the examples of Muay Thai guys trying to come in and use the clinch, right? We've seen guys like Tong Chai and Glory get knocked out by like a Cedric Dumbay trying to initiate the clinch when someone's whipping big bombing punches at you. So having to understand how to use the defense. So have to use a little bit more fainting, your head movement, maybe high guard shell pairing. You have to do a little bit more traditional boxing in order to get better with the Muay Thai and the kickboxing rules. Now, the other difference you're gonna see is stance. 
Now, usually when you talk about Muay Thai versus kickboxing, boxing even versus kickboxing, you're gonna notice stance changes all the time. A traditional Muay Thai stance, okay, is gonna have, be more square. They're not gonna be as bladed because bladed means you can't use your teep as well, you won't be able to block as much, so Muay Thai stance, a little bit more square. You're gonna notice maybe hands and elbows frame out a little bit. This way you can smack elbows, even with the body being opening, they catch the kicks a lot, which is not allowed in kickboxing. You can catch one strike, but in Muay Thai, the catching, the blocking of the kicks is more of a game and a play, right? Kicks, blocking them, this is why the square stance is good. But what does the square stance do bad? It's, it keeps you open to boxing, and this is the big difference I'm trying to say in this video, is the hands need to improve in the Muay Thai fighter. So if you're too square, and you're standing really tall, and someone's good at pressure and getting inside to get upstairs and bang punches, by standing tall and relaxed, you have more of a chance of getting hit with the big bombing shots. So first thing they might have to work is maybe sometimes get that lead side in front instead of staying so square. So making adjustments is the key. Now, can you stay in a Muay Thai style and be successful in kickboxing? Of course you can, right? With all of these little differences, if you're so good at your style, if your front kicks are phenomenal and you're in a square Muay Thai stance and I can't come inside and I can't box with you because your kicks are so good, then this is kind of a benefit for you. You don't have to traditionally go back to the boxing. But when you get to a certain point, a certain opponent, you're gonna have to be comfortable in that range. Even at the lowest level to the highest level, understanding these little differences play a big deal, okay? So make sure, one, you understand the differences first. Okay, something so simple as square versus a little bladed to help your boxing to generate more power, narrow your center line is all gonna help, all right? So back to that other point of being so good in Muay Thai, right? That slow pace could work for you, right? As long as you're maybe using your kicks to counter punches. So there are ways where Muay Thai benefits you and there's other sides where, you know what? Being a little bit more kickboxing based could have been better. All right? Usually when you lose, you see a Muay Thai guy lose, the first thing you're gonna say is, well, he should have practiced his boxing even more. He's gotta go into boxing. But that's not necessarily true. If you're so dominant and so good, you don't necessarily have to. An example of my career, all the way up to my world title fight, I really didn't box much. I used my low kicks to shut boxers down all the time. It wasn't until my fight with Nikki Holtzkin that I realized that, you know what, I need my hands to be a little bit better. Now it's been a decade of straight boxing. So just understanding where the benefits of your style are and your disadvantages are kind of help you evolve as a fighter, right? So your strengths in one could still be a strength in the other as long as you understand that this is their rule set, this is the game, and this is what they're trying to do, all right? So understanding the small differences are important, right? So I did give you five differences, but I also told you of the five differences, you can still do one very effectively. But I want you to go home and analyze all of these five points and say, where does your stance? Can you adapt and change them? What about your defense? Do you only rely on clinch for defense? Or at least can you use a high guard, catch, head movement, and parry? Start introducing these things, okay? Now, instead of a slow pace where you're only using kicks and knees, start doing more punch volume. Get on the bag. Make sure your pad holder is getting you throwing a lot of strikes, right? So those are the small changes that you can prepare. But don't let the base of the Muay Thai go. It still works, still very effective, but just add these little changes when needed is the key, depending on the opponent. The ability to adapt is one of the most important things in martial arts. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's episode. There was a lot of learning going on here and a lot of understanding, but you guys have been following since the start, so I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. All right, like, subscribe, share. Make sure you support Hayabusa by going to Hayabusa Fight linked in the description below. We have Perfect Sports Nutrition also linked below. We have bazookashop.com and last but not least bazookatraining.com which is where I teach online. I give you bag workouts, home workouts, sparring drills, tutorials, four videos a week. Brand new videos plus a huge archive. Now that's probably got over a hundred videos and all you're paying is $9.99 US dollars per month Every Monday, four videos plus the huge archive, all of this stuff here, you would know by just heading to bazookatraining.com. All right, likes, subscribe, share, and we'll see you next time here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Welcome to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA Online Training. 
I'm Bazooka Joe Veltellini, the owner here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Over the past year, I've designed and created a website to teach Bazooka curriculum at home and across the world. The purpose of this website is for you to one, hit your fitness and health goals, all while learning world-class martial arts instruction from me. The beautiful thing about this website, it's geared for all levels. So if you're learning martial arts for the first time as a beginner, we help you progress into the bigger stages. And if you're a pro fighter, guess what? We have different fight concepts for you to improve your tool set and your skills in the ring or cage. As the fastest rising kickboxing world champion and a lifelong martial artist with over 30 years of experience, I've been able to combine my passion for martial arts and teaching to create this website. This website's gonna give you some of the tricks, secrets, and inside look at some of the training I use to win my world title. Once you subscribe to this site, you're gonna be getting weekly training videos and tutorials that you can do from anywhere. The sections are broken up into three parts. The first is bag workout. So if you have a bag at home or at your gym, you can use these workouts to supplement your training. The second is at home workouts. A lot of us don't have the room for a bag or a bag in general, so these workouts are for no equipment needed and you can do them anywhere. And finally, the tutorial section. If you're having any problems with a specific technique or fight concept that's covered in any of the workouts, go to the tutorial section, learn the technique, and then go back to the workout, and this time, do it with proper technique. One of the added benefits once you subscribe is the forum section, where you can get a more personalized experience where you can ask questions, and I'll be able to go in there and answer them. It's all about building a team and a community of martial artists helping each other grow. So subscribe now to get access to all the videos plus more so you can be part of the squad here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.